Dive is a truly unique board game, and in today's age, that's actually a pretty impressive feat. Using its unique components, Dive is an observation game with elements of deduction and risk-taking. Play happens simultaneously. It sees players having hidden programming and then a big reveal to see which diver is most successful diving to the bottom of the ocean. Let's go ahead and jump into the review. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Battlecast. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a review for Dive and its prototype copy. And with that prototype caveat, uh, just know that components here you know, will be improved upon, but the essence of the gameplay is very much preserved. Now Dive is coming to us from Sit Down Games and is designed by Romain Catergian and Anthony Perron. The game is for one to four players, takes about 30 minutes to play, and is for ages eight and up but there is actually a kid-friendly rule set that sees you uh, capable of playing with ages six and up. Now, as always, I review games based on gameplay components and fun factor, so let's go ahead and jump into gameplay. Now, when I said Dive was a unique game, I meant it. There's not a lot of games that I can compare this to. The game sees players taking part in a sacred ceremony where the objective is to dive to the bottom of the ocean, and collect the sacred stone, and this is represented by this dive track scene here. The first player to get to the end gets the stone. Now the mechanics of dive are actually quite simple. It's a hidden program game. The objective of each round of play is to predict the top five layers of the ocean stack represented by these transparent tiles seen in the middle of the table here. Now when you set up the game, you're going to take this thick stack of tiles and shuffle them and flip them every which way, and then once they're set, you can't touch them again. At the beginning of the round, every player is going to have their chance to kind of look around and, you know, take a look and see what they think the top five layers are going to contain. And this can be aided by the use of a flashlight, maybe from your phone, underneath the tile or holding it around, whatever helps you. The main predictions in this game are, are there sharks on the layer that you think there are? And are there good things, you know, like sea turtles and manta rays, which will speed up your diver? The way that you predict is by the five slots on your player board. Now you want to predict the top five layers. So if, for example, you thought there was a shark on the top layer, you would flip one of your dive tokens to the shark side and place it there. The other thing about your dive token is the number on them. And this number is to help decide who gains the aid of the sea turtles and the manta rays. So again, for example, if there's a shark, and a turtle on the top layer of the dive track, and you put, for example, a five, you would have a increased chance of taking the benefit of that turtle, which will move you one or two extra spaces on the dive track. Now you can actually use multiple tokens on one set, and you actually don't have to program all five layers if you don't want to. Once everyone has programmed what they think the top five layers of this transparent stack contain, you reveal and carry out the round. And you do this by taking the top layer and holding it up, and whoever guessed correctly moves on to the next programmed action. If you make a mistake, unfortunately your dive for this round stops there. But if you are successful, you carry on until you either make a mistake or you've guessed all five layers correctly. For each level a player guessed correctly, that's how many spaces they move on the dive track, in addition to any turtles or manta rays they may have won. Now you'll notice that the dive track actually has two layers to it. There's the light portion, the top half, and the dark portion, the bottom half. And this is because once you get into the deep part of the ocean, if you make any mistake on your prediction, you actually don't get, you don't move at all. So when you get into the later section of the game, you have to predict very carefully. And that may include guessing only one or two layers at a time, uh, because, you know, obviously the deeper you predict, the more likely you are to make a mistake. Once a player gets to the end, they win. Now there's an advanced version of play which introduces companions. And these companions are one-time use effects that are asymmetric, um, that players can use to kind of either aid themselves or impede their opponents. Uh, one such is the octopus, which I think is quite funny, where 
Once you think you have a good grasp on the layers of the, you know, the top five layers, you can throw your octopus on top of the stack and no one can touch it and you can't move it. And it will literally physically impede people's ability to see what's underneath. And they do other things like that, but it's, it's pretty funny. The other aspect I'll mention is that there is a chief or a programmed player you can add into the mix. And you may want to do this if you're playing solo, if you're playing with just two players, but basically the um, automaton will, you know, be there and has a chance to win the game itself. So it kind of mixes things up. And lastly, as I mentioned in the intro, there is a simplified version for uh, younger players where it takes away, you know, the emphasis on predictability and more on just having having a good time. Now moving on to components. So this is obviously a prototype copy and I won't talk to you know too much but the art is very cool. I really like this uh, you know traditional Polynesian type art. It's very pretty and um, you know the components do what they want to. Obviously these transparent tiles with you know some of them having you know, air pockets and things like that. They do exactly what this game said it was going to and what I thought it was going to. This ability to kind of look down into it, it it's well done and that's exactly what they wanted to do. Now moving on to fun factor. You know, when it comes to dive, unfortunately, it's not a hit for me. You know, when this game was pitched and I wanted to do a review for it, I really wanted to. I thought this was going to be a really unique, interesting game. But when it reached the table, it just didn't actually work as well as I thought it would. And, you know, this is a, this is a totally unique style of game, and I understand that this might not be for me. So one of the reasons that it doesn't really work is Firstly, it's based on visual acuity. This is one of the only games I can think of where your eyesight makes a huge difference. So if you're going to play with, you know, someone who's older than 60 or something like that, they may not actually be able to play this game just because of physical limitations or someone who's visually impaired. You know, that's it. The, you know, they're not going to have a good time with this game. And the other aspect that has to do with the gameplay which is visual you know observation is that what do you learn from it what are you take how do you improve next time you know some games like murder mysteries or you know unlock you get to learn aspects you're like okay i should look really carefully in the corner of the room because there's you know they often hide things there you can pick up but in here there is nothing you can learn to do better next time. It's, were you able to see the thing? And if you didn't, see better next time. And so I found I was playing this game, and sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. But it was never based on my skill. I have not found that I am able to see through these tiles with an increasing skill. Now that might just be me personally, but as somebody who plays board games for strategy, board games for whatever, uh, it's not there. I can't improve at this game. The other aspect, and again, this might just be friend groups, is there weren't any stand-up moments. And I think that's what this game is hoping for, you know? You're hoping that everyone's leaning over the table and assessing the tiles and then programming and there's a big reveal and you're like tile one who guessed a shark oh you're a but what it really feels like honestly is it's like tile one there's a shark on it you're oh you're out and you're out and you're just kind of like okay well i i really thought there wasn't a shark there and then you i don't know like it it just fizzles in a little bit so it there was no exciting moment when you because you can't improve upon your next play, it didn't feel like there was any reason to be upset or excited. You're just kind of like, well, I didn't look hard enough. Um, and that's the truth of the matter. Now, I will say for a younger audience, this might be a total hit. If you are going to play with people, you know, 14 years old and younger, this might be a totally fun game because it's random and textural and visual and i totally get that 
for me as someone who comes from like a, a strategy war gamer background i i can't see when i would honestly play this so that's my review for dive there are lots of cool things to do with it excellent idea totally unique gameplay good components i think it has a lot you know of potential for a younger audience but for me unfortunately a swing and a miss so i hope you have found this review helpful uh, thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next video thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed the video please consider supporting the channel by liking this video or subscribing to the channel and especially hitting that bell icon feel free to leave comments in the comment section below i love talking with you guys until next video i'll see you then thanks